Welcome, baseball fans, to the latest episode of Diamond Kings, the show where we discuss the news and happenings of baseball as part of the Sports Kings Media Network. We've got injury news, drafts to talk about. The Red Sox have had a busy week from losing streaks to winning streaks to brawls. Uh, joining me, as always, is an all-star panel of Sports Kings bloggers and experts. My name is David Whitlock. I am down here in Houston, Texas, and it's starting to get warm down here. Speaking of warm, let's go a little bit north to Dallas, Texas, where Leroy McConnell joins us. How are you tonight, Leroy? Pretty good, David. How are you doing? Laugh often, right above his head. I agree with that. And next, <laughs> we'll go with uh, Kelvin LaPierre from Artport, New York. How are you doing, Kelvin? New hair cutting off? Oh, we're doing good. Finally staying warm for a whole week. It's pretty nice. Summer is here. The kids are out of school, etc. And last but never least is Michael Prosser from, is it Florence, South Carolina? Indeed it is, and I love the fact that you always like to save the best for last, Mr. Whitlock. I'd like to give a special shout-out to my grandparents for giving me this awesome new recliner that I am sitting in today. It's going to be <laughs> awesome. Uh, you know, nice change of pace from the nice little white wall that I always have, but... I think I've spent, let's see, I got this chair uh, three or four days ago, and I think I've spent the majority of my time in this. So thank you, grandparents, for this awesome recliner. Excellent. Hopefully hopefully they'll watch the show. Uh, no shout-out to your South Carolina baseball teams in college. Except for the College of Charleston. Except right. for the College of Charleston. Shout-out to the College of Charleston. Charleston. Grant that out. Well, well played. College, college of Charleston apparently owns the state. Yeah, good for them, though. You know, it's an upstart team. Good for them. Absolutely. That's fun when some of those teams make it. We've got, uh, I think, Kennesaw State and, and some others. Uh, but we're not talking college today. We talked college last week. We're going to talk a little pro action. Last week about this time, we were basically digging a grave for the Red Sox. They had the 10-game uh, losing streak, something like that. They looked like they could do nothing right. Uh, that was around Memorial Day. Come to find, they didn't. after we dogged them, they didn't lose a game for like a week. And I th think they finally lost a couple days ago. Uh, but in that process, they went after the worst team in the American League, the Tampa Bay Devil Rays. And by, the, by they went after, I meant they hit each other with pitches, threw punches, etc. We've had pitchers suspended. We've had pitchers not suspended. We've had fines doled out. We have an angry David Ortiz. We have David Price involved. Lots to talk about. We'll start up in the Northeast and go with Kelvin. Kelvin, what do you think about this rivalry? This is the best rivalry in sports. What do you think of how it all went down with suspensions, with the bean brawls, etc.? Well, let's not forget this actually started when Tampa Bay decided to do a defensive indifference play during that 10-game losing streak of the Red Sox. And that started a benches clearing brawl and had a couple of suspensions thrown in there. And then you go up to back to last year's postseason, and it's David Ortiz hits two home runs off David Price, and he stands in the box a little bit longer than he should have and stared at his handiwork on both home runs. So David Ortiz and David Price both had phone conversations over the summer about that, and I guess David Price didn't like his attitude still about the game, and he decided to hit him. And then then it gets a warning in the first inning, which I understand why John Farrell's upset about it, because now your pitcher can't even come close to hitting anybody, and he gets he's going to get tossed, and Farrell's going to get tossed, but Farrell got tossed before that, so it didn't really matter. And... Uh, the Red Sox, the rivalry and everything, it's taken. It's just taken over the Yankees-Red Sox rivalry, which has kind of decreased ever since Pedro Martinez and Manny Ramirez, Jorge Posada and all that have seemingly fallen off the map now that they're retired or no longer playing because Manny Ramirez is now playing in AAA for, for Chicago Cubs, I believe. So it's taken over the Yankees rivalry and Red Sox, and um, this, this is far from over. And Brandon... The uh, pitcher for the Red Sox, Brandon Wild Wedman, uh, Waldman, Workman. Whitman, Workman. Uh, Workman. Weldon shouldn't uh, should, he shouldn't have been suspended. He didn't hit anybody. He threw it behind him, and it wasn't it wasn't really that close. So, I I don't agree with the suspensions, the fines. I'm I'm okay with, but I was reading an article today about it because I've been working 55 hours, so I haven't got much in other than Yankee games. Um. Just let the players – don't even give out warnings anymore. Let the players police the game like they do in hockey. It seems to work a lot better, and the tensions seem not to flare up as much. And the tension kind of cools down after after a, a benches-clearing thing. You know, tension cools down, and it's not 
oh, okay, we'll just wait and get them tomorrow now, and it doesn't drag on. Let the let the players police everything themselves now. Yeah, there are some good points indeed. Uh, you know, the whole bench is clearing brawl. I mean, the bench just means everybody gets off their butt and, like, walks out and stands behind the big guys. I mean, nobody's out there. Every now and then you get a weird couple of little scuffle going. You know, Pedro Martinez throwing down Don Zimmer, that sort of thing back in the old days. But for the most part, it, it it's just all for show. I kind of agree with you on policing the game yourself. Uh, so we'll, we'll stay with uh, – we'll go down to Michael. Uh, what do you think about this? Uh, good thing, bad thing for baseball, this rivalry. What's up with the Yankees? Go. Well, first off, I'm trying to figure out when 10 years ago was the old days, man. You're – Jeez, man, I mean, that was I was 14 and in the ninth grade. You're already making me sound like I'm 35, man. you got to cut that out. Watch your mouth. Well, 35 sounds good to Leroy and I. <laughs> hey, come on. You guys are still young at heart now. Come on. No, I I, I, I kind of like the fact that the rivalry, you know, it, the rivalry starting to uh, kind of shift its way from Yankees, Red Sox to Yankees, Rays. It's kind of exciting now. I mean, the old guard is dying, as we're seeing in baseball. And as as much as baseball is a sport of traditions, and Yankee, there is no more greater tradition in baseball than probably you know a hot dog at a ballpark than Yankees, Red Sox. It's kind of nice to see something new for a change. Having said that, I would let I would pay on pay per view to see David Ortiz and David Price go at least, you know, three or four rounds because I don't think David Ortiz could last, you know, two rounds with no lung capacity. Uh, you know, David Price would probably knock him out. Uh, especially the whole, this is a war, this is not a war. Uh, that was that was great. That is made for TV stuff, you know. I'm, I kind of wish Billy Martin and them would have had, you know, Twitter back in the day so we could have been able to read stuff like that. That would have been cool to see. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm excited to see what happens next. Uh, it's, um, it's kind of a... I think it's a good thing for baseball. I really do. You know, it, it's something new for these younger fans to look at. I mean, you know, you watch a Yankees Red Sox game nowadays. It's it's kind of boring, dull, an old hat, kind of like watching paint dry. You watch a Yankees and Rays. Somebody's liable to get their head clear, taken off. That's great TV. That's like a you know, I'm all for it. There should be more of it like that. So spoken like true hockey fans, both of you. Indeed. <laughs> What, what I wonder is, uh, is this going to energize the Tampa Bay fan base? None of them even show up to games. You, you know, I mean, it, it, at least when 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 the when the Red Sox come to town, I mean, it yeah. needs to. I mean, you you you. There's still good players in Tampa Bay. Absolutely. Evan Long I hate to still, say it, it's not going to help Harvey, them at all. Matt Harvey's there. Uh, you know, uh, being aside from the fact that you know Matt Harvey's kind of had some up and down stuff. Uh, Will Meyer is. Down there, correct? I, th I think he's still there. Yes. Um, you know, there's still some guys down there that are, you know, still good players. Let's not rem let's not forget, guys. You know, it wasn't, but you know, four or five years ago, this team was in the World Series. So I mean, they're, you know, they're down, yeah, but they're not out. I mean, let's 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 face it, Tampa Bay fans. You guys have had a heck of a lot worse years than this one. You know, I mean, let's go back to some of those early, the, those mid to late 90s teams that were just god-awful. Oh. Early 2000s? <laughs> when, when, you, when you were still the devil rays. I mean, you guys are just the rays now. But <laughs> Wade Boggs was still playing back then. <laughs> Ooh. Leroy, you've been patient. Do uh, you got any thoughts on this uh, rivalry? Well, I told you last week that you just woke up a sleeping giant. The Red Sox are woken up. This, this was the best thing ever happened to the Red Sox. Someone trying to take on the the bully. Now the bully's woken up. They're now responding. They're all getting together. They're ready to play some baseball. Um, I think Ortiz is probably pissed off because he was the one getting hit, and David Price didn't get uh, ejected. They probably should have been ejected. To the fact that didn't he hit somebody else? A uh, cart. Matt Carp or Mike Carp. In the fourth inning. Okay. The, you know the rule. The, the cardinal rule is if you retaliate, you the one the one that retaliates is the one that gets ejected. That's why Workman got uh, booted. Um, but his happened in the sixth inning, so that's just what makes it so much weird. Yeah, but like I said, you know, the first time you hit somebody, they give you what a warning, and then this, and then when you retaliate because he warned both teams, and when Workman. You, you have to respond, and that's what Workman did because teammates were expecting the pitcher to go ahead and hit one of their guys. 
He should have went ahead and hit him. I don't understand why he didn't. He <laughs> threw over the guy's head. Because he it was at his head. Well, heck, he should have hit him. He was going to get ejected regardless. Because, like I said, you know, in any sport, whether it be basketball, whether it be football, and baseball, when you retaliate, you automatically get ejected. And so Boston, they screwed up. They still went ahead and went after one, uh, Longoria first. Um, like I said, it is a robbery, and um, you know both teams don't like each other. You know Bryce was going after uh, one of their guys. They've been talking about it. So um, Boston's upset because they felt they've been cheated. Um, I don't think it's a robbery right now from the fact that um, – Who's Tampa Bay? Tampa Bay don't want anything. Um, the rivalry's still with New York and um, Boston, but uh, I don't see the rivalry. It's just those teams are just still like one another. So that's my thought. I, th- I think this will blow over here in a few weeks. Uh, I, I, who knows? As long as Xavier Ortiz is around, it'll, it'll flare up over the season. I think you hit the nail right on the head, Leroy. This this did wake up the Red Sox. The Red Sox were kind of starting to turn things around. Last week we were talking like whether Stephen Drew could inject some life into the team. Somehow, nothing like a good good fight to get everybody on the same side, good for the clubhouse. They're playing some good baseball, and the AL East is so winnable. So it'll be interesting to see if if this puts them on a trajectory like last year and they can catch some of the fire that they that they got that, that uh, propelled them all the way to the World Series title. Uh, so, Shout out to Justin Masterson for shutting him down the other day, though. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> he actually, he like, it, it's starting to seem like Justin Masterson – and that Indians pitching staff is finally starting to come around a little bit, slowly but surely, coming around a little bit. Let's let's move on to some injury news. We've had a couple guys coming back this week. Jose Abreu is back for the White Sox, the AL rookie phenom, as well as Josh Hamilton for the Angels. I happened to go to the Astros game last night, and he always torments us, and he did once again with another home run, first game back. But also at the Astros game last night, Mike Trout left with a back injury, so they get one, they put one. Tell me what injuries you're watching around the league. What Do you think any of these uh, guys coming back from injuries are going to make a big difference? Uh, your thoughts on Abreu? Does he have competition from Springer to Naka on Rookie of the Year? And uh, this time we'll go to Michael first. Well, the baseball gods give it and the baseball gods take it away. Uh, you know, if Josh Hamilton can come back and find some of that form that he had in Texas, uh, you know, before signing that huge contract in Anaheim, I don't think they'll miss Mike Trout as much. Um, there's still some, you know, some a little bit of pitching issues there that need to be worked out. Um, I still don't know yet if Jared Weaver has finally gotten back on track. Uh, you know, if he has, great. Uh, then the, I think the Angels are going to keep moving along. But if not, could be some. Um, I don't want to say dark days ahead because Mike Trout has only been listed as day to day. But you know, I mean, who knows what day to day turns day to day could turn into a stint on the DL. Um, but as as for Abreu, I. I still give him Rookie of the Year. Uh, if you guys remember correctly, I think it was, what, last week or two weeks ago when we did our uh, our show on that, I did pick him. It's two home runs in two straight games after coming off the DL, after not playing for, what, two, three weeks maybe, almost a month. That's all. That, that that's awesome. I, I, I never would be able to do that. I mean, the fact that I can, you know, hit a 45-mile-an-hour fastball is good enough for me. Um, you know, I think he's going to invigorate, you know, that White Sox offense a little bit more. Uh, you know, they're they're still kind of, you know, in the thick of things in that AL Central. The Tigers don't have as much of a stranglehold as they would like. Um, but I'm kind of interested to see what Ryan Zimmerman's going to do now that he's back with the Nationals. You know, he's coming back from that thumb. I think he missed like 44 games. Uh, the AL East is – or not the AL East, excuse me, the NL East is still kind of – I don't know. There's kind of a log jam now. The Braves are starting to, you know – I don't know what the heck's going on with Gavin Floyd and that pitching staff, uh, but that's god awful. Uh, just some god awful performances and blowing a lead to the Mariners. Um, but let's not forget, this is not you know your dad's Mariners team. This Mariners team is actually good. Uh, you know the Nationals are right there. The Marlins obviously aren't 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 much this year anymore. Uh, the Mets are the Mets. The season was over at the first pitch, and the Phillies are the Phillies. You know they're still starting to you know. They're going to have to hit a rebuilding mode here pretty soon. So it's pretty much a two-man team between the Nats and the Braves. Let's see if Ryan Zimmerman is going to be able to give them a, a little push. 
Good, good stuff. Uh, Leroy, let's go to the epicenter of injuries, that being the Texas Rangers. You got any good news out of Texas? Is anybody coming back anytime soon or any other injuries? No, I, I think they just put Alexio Gondo on the uh, on the Thank DL. Thank God. Line, he, he, he was facing batting practice yesterday for the Orioles <laughs> last night, especially to that Nelson Cruz Nelson guy. Cruz yeah, I heard <laughs> <laughs> Who's that guy? Yeah. yeah. I think the Rangers are regretting not signing that Nelson Cruz guy back. Some of the fact that... Um, you know, he got signed with the last minute for twenty fifth hour. Yeah, eight million dollars. I'm sure that the Rangers could afford an eight million dollar contract for one year, just like the Orioles did. Um, my my own big concern right now was um the guy out of Colorado, Cargo. Um, Paul Gonzalez. He he was on the fifteen day disabled list. Is that the same finger he hurt earlier? You know, he had information. Probably, I'm not sure for certain, but well, you know it's. I mean, you know, he he's he's a uh, MVP candidate each and every year, and all of a sudden, I mean, he's having a horrible year as far as the injury concerns. So, um, Cargo will be my own biggest disappointment as far as the disabled list right now. Yeah, the, the Rockies were off to a hot start, and then it kind of regressed, and and certainly losing a guy like him, even though Tulowitzki playing at MVP level, you got to have that one-two punch to compete mm-hmm. with the Giants, who just run away with that division. Uh, Kelvin, what do you think about the injuries? Uh, Bray, you, any, anything? All right. Uh, well, let's not forget Chicago. I mean, not Chicago. Colorado's hot start was at home. They were a below 500 team on the road. They're really hot at home. But uh, I like Bray, you still for the uh, AL MB- MVP. Tanaka is still getting the Cy Young in the AL, even though Burley's pitching his mind off. But. Uh, Abreu is going to be the factor for Chicago to stay in the race with Detroit because Detroit is seemingly still stumbling when it comes to that pitching staff. Like uh, Scherzer's not pitching like he did last year. You don't have Verlander on his A game right now. So if Abreu stays healthy, which I think he will now, he that he's going to help that team stay in the race at least until after the All Star break. Because I think that's when Detroit's going to turn it on and they're going to start performing. But I want to go to the Yankees. I hate doing it because that's that's all I seem to have most of my information on. Because that's you generally all you get around here, besides Chicago and WGN, which is ending. <laughs> it's the radio part. Um, we're tomorrow we get back Carlos Beltran. He's coming off the disabled oh. list with the bone spur in his elbow. We just moved Michael Pineda to the 60-day DL with a back injury. CC Sabathia is still July timetable, and I'm looking to see if Carlos Beltran can ignite this Yankees lineup that just seemingly cannot produce with runners in scoring position again. It's two years in a row now Yankees fans have seen this. We've rebooted, we've reloaded everything, and we still can't score with runners in scoring position. We blew a game last night because we couldn't. Mark Teixeira comes up in the ninth, bottom of the ninth inning. Ellsbury's on first. The shift is on when the count starts 0-0 and you don't bunt. Ellsbury stands on third if you bunt that ball to third because nobody's on that side of the infield. Nobody. So that's my rant. But I think Abreu is a bigger thing because I think Hamilton's going to get hurt again. He hasn't proven he can stay on the field longer in a month or two and produce at a consistent level since he's went to Los Angeles. So I'm going to say Abreu is the X factor in Chicago to stay in the division. But yeah, yeah. Ham- Hamilton's used to. Uh, he's good for forty games a year. So <laughs> <laughs> he's, only, he's about nine or ten. <laughs> so he's got a few more. He, he came into the game. I mean, they put the stats on the scoreboard. He's like batting four forty four, slugging's like one thir- thirteen on or something. I'm like what the hell? I was like, oh, that's yeah. right. His first game back. Yeah. Uh, that's certainly a good <laughs> point, impressive. Kelvin. Uh, I, I'm glad you reminded me. I'll have to activate Beltran on my fantasy team. I've got him working around there as a third outfielder. And I, I think the Yankees are going to need him to contribute. They need something. Hey, to, to, to share his credit, I think he had like pretty much all the offense last night before. He yeah, had the home runs, but, but but still, in the ninth inning, a tie game two yeah. two, you get in that whole side of the infield with the speed guy on first base. Get the bunt laid down and get him standing on third with the shift on. Just What's made going no on sense. Sorry, I Sorry, he's just he's swinging and missing at everything. Right. He's batting in like seventh. They yeah. moved him down the lineup. He's batting behind my man. Johannes Salarte. And, and the Cubs, the Cubs uh, checks that they're paying him are still uh, clearing him. Still paying him $12 million. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> the, Cubs, the Yankees thank the Cubs for that support. 
<laughs> so uh, big week in the uh, in baseball this week with the Major League Baseball draft. Uh, there's a lot of top prospects out there. We all know it's hard to know a lot about all the prospects. We all know a little bit. Except Michael knows everything about every prospect. So we'll go to him last uh, this time. Never last, but never least. Uh, but so thoughts on draft prospects? Pick a team. What you like to see your team get? What, what do you think about an individual draftee? Who do you think the Astros should take number one? And we'll go right back to Kelvin because I know he's got a, a, a draft pick that he's got earmarked for success. I have it earmarked for success. I believe it's the 13th pick in the mock draft on MLB.com. It has Brandon Finnegan going to the Kansas City Royals. And I've seen this guy on YouTube, and I've been watching him at TCU every now and then. I'll see. I'll catch him on on the TCU website. Five foot eleven, ninety-eight to ninety-nine mile an hour fastball, and is consistently ninety-eight to ninety-six. For a fastball, his slur- it's it's a curveball, but it's more like a slurve, which Major League GMs are scared of because it tends to flatten out, but his has a sharp break to it. Click on his name on MLB.com. You can see his slurve. It's pretty nasty. It's a sw- It's not like a flattened out slurve. It's, it's a slurve that keeps moving and batters swing over the top of it. It's pretty sick, and he also has a changeup that drops 10 to 12 miles an hour off of his fastball speed, so he's around 86 to 82 with his changeup, which is really, really good, and his control is there. He has really good demand, and he hits his spots. Um, and he's five foot eleven. He's the shortest player in the draft in the first round selections on MLB.com, which is why I love him because I'm a short guy. So I'm giving I'm giving the props to the short guys around the league. Yeah. Good call. Yeah, he uh, apparently reading up on him. He was like 0 and 8 last year at TCU mm-hmm. for for a record with with lousy run support. But now look where TCU is now. They were one of three national seeds to make it uh, to the Super Regional. So catch them this weekend on the TSPN uh, networks of college baseball. You'll see him pitch at least one game, maybe two, and uh, they'll be facing. Uh, I can't remember who they're facing. Yeah, I can't remember either. Yeah, uh, I'll get that data for you. Uh, before the show's out, but um, let's go over to, speaking of uh, Dallas-Fort Worth area, Leroy, you got anybody in the, anybody in the draft you're looking at? Well, I'm looking at the legacy of Tom Gordon's little boy, Nick Gordon. Um, shortstop, high school from Orlando, Florida. Um, he's supposed to be the best athlete in the, in the uh, first round. Um, only if he had a, a wicked curveball like his dad, he probably could be a uh, I don't know, a jack of all trades, but um, I'm not too sold on anybody that's playing college for three years, such like that kid out of NC State, uh, Roden. I mean, yeah, yeah. Rodon, I mean, I, I kind of wonder, um, I mean, why do you stay in college for three years if you're supposed to be one of the top pitchers in the draft? I don't understand that. Um, then it, it's going to take them, what, two or three years to mature and get to the big leagues? Um, I think that's a waste. Um, if I'm drafting, I'm drafting for a high school team or a high school or a kid in the world because he's coming straight out of high school. I figure two or three years, 20 years old, hopefully um, make some big league roster. Probably won't be there for the Rangers, of course, uh, but uh, I'll have my own Nick Ward. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a good uh, good prospect there. We uh, TCU will be playing Pepperdine, I believe it is, coming from the West Coast. Um, so that clears that up. Of course, you know, College of Charleston, where Michael's from, will be also visiting the state of Texas and playing Texas Tech. So uh, go ahead, Michael. Tell us what you know about the draft. Who do you think the first pick should be, third pick? What do you think your favorite team should be? Lay it all out. Well, first of all, before I begin, I just want to give a special shout-out to the MLB Network for their Top 50 show that they did. Um, I think I watched that two or three times just to try to get all the information that they had, and it was it was an outstanding pick. Um, I kind of had to uh, shoe up some space on my DVR for that one, but it was well worth it. Um, just a, a, a few names to throw out. I heard a lot of Mike Poppy and a lot of Derek Fisher when I lived in Pennsylvania. Uh, two of those guys, especially Derek Fisher himself. I actually went to rival high school uh, and actually dated a girl that had like three or four classes with him. Uh, the guy hit already. The guy said already um, 300 in the. Ah, what's the, the Cape Cod League? He hit 300 in the Cape Cod League. Mike Poppy's got power from Tunkahannock, PA. Um, 
or my yeah, Nick Howard could be you know a closer at the next level. He's got above average to plus stuff, nasty curveball. Uh, well then then you go. Um, I'm gonna go down to North Carolina for a little bit. You got Jeff Hoffman is a wild card out of um, East Carolina. Had Tommy John surgery, was pitching lights out before Tommy John surgery. Probably gonna be a compensatory round type of guy. Uh, Michael Chavis out of Georgia, all around guy can play third, short, second. Can play some ca- catcher. If he doesn't get dra- uh, you know, probably one of the late draft guys committed to Clemson. Um, but if you know the right, if the price is right, he might you know be able to hop on somewhere. Jacob Gatewood's probably the second coming of Troy Tulowitzki. Uh, <laughs> that guy's ridiculous. The, the future 30 home run guy. Uh, in my state alone, Grant Holmes, who's got probably the best curveball in this draft. Daniel Gossett from Clemson. Mason McCulloch from Lander. Small, tiny Division three school, third-round guy type of guy. Madison Stokes who's one of the best high school players, position players from AC Floor, the top per, uh, high school in Columbia for baseball. Uh, you know, you've got three of the last picks – that the Tampa Bay Rays have made have been from the state of South Carolina. Keep your eye on the state of South Carolina. The South Atlantic region alone is chock full of talent from Georgia to Florida. It's ridiculous. But the main guy that I'm really looking for is Tyler Kolick. Big, strong kid out of your neck of the woods, Mr. Whitlock. Consistently throws over 100, uh, throws 100 miles an hour. High heat, nasty 12 to 6 curveball. Doesn't throw a changeup, but he does have a second, uh, third pitch, and it's, it's a nasty slider. Uh, so the changeup, not throwing a changeup is probably a big knock on him. And the fact that there's nobody to compare him to because he throws over 100 consistently, because he's so big. TCU. 6'6", 6, 6'7". Six, 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 yeah, somewhere around those numbers, yeah. TCU is going to be getting a hell of a pitcher if and only if they can still keep him. If he goes within the top three, there's no way in hell he's going to TCU. So, you know, you guys in TC in, 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 the, in the Texas Christian fan base, hold your breath. Say your prayers. I personally would take him at number one. I know everybody is looking at the left-hander. Um, Andrew, say, Aaron Bradley oh, or something like that. Bradley A or something. A- Brady, something, Brady. something that begins with an A. Brady, Very Brady. polished left Brady. Yeah, a key. Very polished left-hander. He's got the stuff almost Clayton Kershaw-like. I mean, you know, that's that's a really hard thing to, you know, say about a high school kid to put such a heavy load on a high school kid like that. It's very possible. A lot of teams like him. Uh, you know, Kolek's probably more of the 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 high-risk, high-reward type deal because he is a huge upside, tremendous upside. But I think a lot of people – Excuse me. Are gonna like are, are liking Aki on this one, and I have the feeling that Houston is going to be making him number one to go along with Apple uh, from last season. Yeah, I definitely think the Astros are gonna look pitching. Uh, they, they've got, of course, the hitting prospects coming up. Carlos Correa is still coming up. The line of the Shields Jr. still coming up. Uh, and some guy named Chris Carter, right? You guys still got him from yeah from the A's. He's he's pretty solid. He's uh, okay. Yeah, if you like strikeouts, the uh, yeah, you know. But I think it'll be interesting because they don't have any big left-handed prospects. The Astros don't, so that would lend towards a Rodone or Aiken pick. Um, I certainly like anytime you pitch in Kershaw. I like that. I like the velocity. I like all the things uh, that that Aiken brings. But I, I think they're going to go with Tyler Kolick. I think they like the local kid. I know. I mean, they brought Nolan out, Ryan out to see him. He's right here. They've talked to him. They can probably negotiate a pretty good deal, and Astros are known for that, to try to save a little draft cap money or whatever. Um, and and so, there's some flags about Rodon that he's, I don't know if he's going to make it. Yeah, they, so, the, uh, the, the pressure this season was – this was not a good yeah. year for Carlos Rodon. It really wasn't. He had a great junior – or a great first couple years, and the pressure that was put on him – by the media, by, you know, everybody in the ACC. I think it, it had an effect. I mean, I saw him get slammed against Clemson. I know Virginia, you know, roughed him up a little bit. Well, uh, you know, he didn't really – I, I don't know if the team around him was as good. I yeah. know they had um, oh, the shortstop guy, Trey Turner or something, who's also – who's another, you know, first-rounder, uh, you know, 
when it comes to a bat. But I don't know if the team around him was as good as it has been in the previous years. But, you know, if the chips get down, is this kid going to be able to, you know, bow up and, you know, come out swinging? Or is he going to fold like a house of cards? And, and with the number one, I mean, the number one draft pick is going to have all the expectation, all the media attention. So I, I'm right with right. you. Uh, I would go with one of the other I guys. think he slips all the way down to six. That could be. be, be something to watch. The draft is, uh, I believe, tomorrow. Uh, which tomorrow is at 6 o'clock. Tomorrow at 6 o'clock, MLB, MLB Network. MLB Network. A lot of folks seeing this show might have already seen the draft, and you can tell us how we did. Uh, so we got to move on. We're going to move off of baseball now. In and, and, and live time right now, they're about to drop a hockey puck on the Stanley Cup Finals. And, and two of our group, and I like to talk hockey, and Leroy knows a little bit, but, but uh, Kelvin and Michael are some of our hockey bloggers over at Around the Rink. And I'd like to get your thoughts on the Stanley Cup Finals with the New York Rangers, the L.A. Kings, New York, L.A., big rivalry, two teams that virtually weren't expected to be here. So what's your thoughts, Kelvin? Get us started. And you've been our best picker so far, so listen to this guy. <laughs> well, I finally got one wrong, and that was Chicago not beating L.A. in seven, like I predicted. Thank you, Chicago, for finally making me a loser. Thank you, Alec Martinez. <laughs> <laughs> <That's right. laughs> but... Uh, Madison Square Garden, get your crap together. I'm not paying $2,200 to go see the Stanley Cup Finals in MSG. I'm sorry. Because you usually have to bring a partner, and that's $4,400 for two seats. And then Lord knows what your parking costs because you're New York City. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to ride the, the mother's death card still and pick the Rangers just because I think that power around Martin St. Louis right now is just incredible. The strength that that team has given him to prepare – to just go out there and play hockey after such a tragic loss of his mother. I picked the Rangers in six, and this series is just going to be a hell of a series. West Coast, East Coast, who's the more dominant team? This is L.A.'s second time back in three years, and Jonathan Quick's playing lights out, but so is Hendrick Lundqvist. You look at their their save percentages, and Everything in the 45 games that they've – or 42 games or whatever it is they've all they've played, they're identical. Two point, It's a 2.24 save percentage, so 2.27 save percentage. And the wins are one off and shutouts are two off for, the, for their career in the postseason. This is just going to be a spectacular series each way. L.A.'s won it uh, based on goaltending and defense last time. This year, this time they're coming in scoring the hottest, I believe, Dowdy's got the most points for a defensive player in the Stanley in the finals. It's just going to be incredible. I, I agree on those counts. I'll, I'll agree with you even more at the end when I wrap this segment up. Leroy, you got a Stanley Cup pick for us? Well, um, since uh, the, the uh, stars are in the West, I know I'm shallow. I'm going to go with LA. <laughs> Um, I know defense wins championships, and uh, I know that uh, the Rangers have a better goalie, but um, like the offense is floating that the, the Kings have, so I'm going to take the Kings and six. New York, you better win the first game. You better win the ninth. Mm, so you get Kings and six, Rangers and six. Michael, you got any thoughts on this? Well, to uh, kind of piggyback off what Kelvin was saying, this is going to be a hell of a series. However, Kelvin, I think you meant GAA, not save percentage, because uh, quick save percentage coming into this game is a 906, where I think Lundqvist is closer to a 924. Um, aside from the fact that this is this is hopefully going to be just as hopefully it's going to be as good of a series as the Chicago LA uh, series was, um, I had the opportunity. Well, I take that back. I did not have the opportunity to see the Kings win the last cup. Uh, having been in um, Navy basic training at the time, uh, just before I got sent home, the Kings ended up ho hoisting it. Uh, so hopefully this time I get the opportunity to, to see Dustin Brown shake Gary Bettman's hand, hold that cup over his head, take it back to Ithaca, New York, in six games. Seen uh, it. With, yeah, I, I, and uh, I got the feeling that if Jonathan Quick doesn't come away with the Conn Smythe Trophy, it's going to be Marion Gabrick because that guy has just been it, it, it lights out. It's it's either going to be Carter, Gabrick, or Jonathan Quick because I, just the experience that Martin St. Louis brings to this this Rangers lineup 
is good. But this Kings team, from top to bottom for the most part, with the exception of maybe three guys, were here two, three years ago in the same spot. There's more yep. experience with L.A. L.A. takes it in six. Physical beats speed. That, yeah, I, I agree with, uh, with both of you guys that these are going to be really, really close games. The goalies are too good to give up too many. You're going to see a lot of four to three, three to two scores, which is enough scoring to keep it interesting. Uh, I, I'm on the uh, uh, Martin St. Louis uh, mother thing. I think, I think the Rangers have just been a team possessed since then. They've just marched through the East, which I, I have a slight favor in that. I think the East is a little better than the West. That's just my preference. Uh, so I, I think it'll be seven games for sure. I think it'll be the Rangers doing it in the Kings' house in Game 7. Another thing I'm really mad about is the NHL lowering the suspension from for the uh, for Dan Rangers. Yes, I, cannot, I, agree. That, I hate that. I That's agree. one of the reasons that fans do not like hockey is because they fluctuate on everything. I, I get that it's the Stanley Cup Finals. I get that. It's been forever. It's been 20 years since... The Rangers were in the Stanley Cup Finals, but you do not lower a suspension just so the guy can play in the Stanley Cup Finals after mm-hmm. Game Four. I'm sorry, no. it just and doesn't the, does not work. One of the reasons why so many people hate Gary Bettman, not only that, but the fact that you gave New Jersey a compensatory first round pick at Their the end of the back. draft because oh they felt sorry for New Jersey because New Jersey kind of you know screwed themselves. No. Please. Stop. When they signed Kovalchuk, come on. Yeah, they signed Kovalchuk right. to the big deal. They had to give up a first round pick. They didn't give up a first round pick. Hey. So they gave up this year's first round pick, which turned out to be a pick in like the top 10 or 12. So now they're like, oh, well, um, we're just going to give you a pick down here at the end of the draft to make everything okay. Stop. All right, hey, this is a baseball show, guys. Back to the subject. <laughs> hey, we've only got a little bit of time, so I want to, uh, 30 seconds or less. There's the big horse race this weekend, California Chrome, going for the Triple Crown. Could be the first time since at least two of you were born. Leroy and I probably don't remember it. So so do you think, uh, yes or no, California Chrome wins the Belmont or take the field? Sorry, we'll go uh, back to Kelvin to start. California Chrome wins it out of the post position, and for the first time in New York racing horse history, he's allowed to wear a breathing strip. That was a big factor. Uh, Leroy, who's, what, you picked hockey, now you pick horses. They said that he is opening in the second hole, and the last time someone, a, a horse won was 20 years ago, so it's not happening. He will lose. Nice. Michael, you got a horse to pick. Field. Yeah, I take the field. Triple crown hasn't been done for, you know, what are you saying, like 20-something years? And even before that with uh, Secretariat, you can't get any better than Secretariat. Not to mention the guy the, the, the guy who's the uh, the jockey has got just a ridiculous schedule, throwing out the first pitch at a Yankees game, tonight's show with, uh, uh, ordeal. Uh, you just ridiculous schedule going on. you got to get your head in the game when it comes to horse racing. Yeah, no, I, 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 good points both. Uh, I, I'm really on the fence on this one. Every time I think they're going to do it, it, I'm like Charlie Brown in the football, and something happens. They get beat at the wire, they pull up lane, they, they just run out of gas. So I'm going to have to say no. There's just too many other uh, field options, and so I'm going to go to the field as well. I look to my right. Wayne Gretzky just dropped the initial ceremonial first puck, so we've got a hockey game to go to, boys. I appreciate your time on this busy sports night with the Diamond Kings. Check us out on sports-kings.com. Check out our baseball blog at Reading Between the Scenes, and also, of course, our hockey blog around the rink that some of these folks participate in. And enjoy the weekend of baseball, and we'll see you next week. Go Kings. (laughs) Ha, 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 ha.